I believe I came to this conclusion that I had to make friends with every moment because I wasn't, I didn't see any way of changing my circumstance. And uh, I, I wasn't gonna, I felt cornered where all my alternatives didn't seem, and I've tried all the answers before. They were just repeat, repeats of everything I've ever tried before. And I finally became exhausted. And I actually, I'd like to take credit for it, but I think I just was exhausted and fell into uh, a broken heart. Imagine that you're seven years old and a qualified therapist tells you that you're gonna to have to spend your life in an institution. It's so easy to say, oh, just close out the sounds or don't be so jitterish. But if you really understand how it feels like to be in a body like David's with these sensory inputs that are so heightened. It's like you turn on the volume really, really high. Anything that comes at you, um, sound, light, touch, smell, taste, then you can understand how it's exhausting. I could understand his experience because he put it in almost like pictures. It's not just words to me. When I read the book, I could feel it because he described the sensations very well. And he described the situations it happened in a way that I could put myself in the situation and I could get the sense in my body from what he told me in the book was his sensations. Oh yeah, I, his awakening is, is, um, comes through the book, you know, in, in various stages. And I think that's something that all of us are invited to do, to, to go through an awakening process. So his process is something for all of us to go through. And um, I guess, you know, part of the awakening is this part about being able to accept yourself as who you, who you are and to also um, not be afraid to live without fear. No one could really imagine a story more, a, a life history more challenging than David Patton's. Um, and yet he smelted something exquisite from it. And I think he would inspire anyone seeking to find their way um, some really, really stunning tools and insights. The hell he went through, um, to me, is just incredible. And to go through that in such detail in this book I think is amazing. And I think, um, first of all, I think, I'm, I mean, he must understand that he is really meeting a, a social need with, with coming out with this stuff because there are so many people who, like him, are, are just, just basically um, told that they have no place, that they can't make it in this world, that, you know, you're a failure, that, you know, we aren't going to, we're not going to put anything into you, we're not going to invest in you. And, uh, and they just sort of carry them along and then just, I guess throw them out to fend for themselves, uh, but he really, he really rallied. I mean, and at a point where he had a, you know, he had the opportunity and and actually the inclination to end things, um, he came to a realization that it was really up to him that the that the system was really going to dispose of him, that that was his future. There was there was nothing there for him. There was no path to success, and if he was going to surrender to that, that that's, that's what would happen to him, um, and that he had to take things into his own hands. 
for me, the, the, the big theme of the book was acceptance and how acceptance can lead you into um, a life that is integrated with everything else within yourself and can allow you to live um, a good life. And a good life I don't mean by socially, but just a life that you feel it's good for you, it's, it's well lived. In his case, acceptance leads into a self-knowledge. Self but from my perspective, the lack is, it's ours. It's our incapacity to accept. And that we make, we have to torture somebody into having to provide for ourselves to whatever we think it's normal. He was a permanently abused, abused by concepts of people. It was not just that they were, he was being punished physically. It's this kind of abuse that he needed to be outside the classroom because he couldn't pay attention. So they needed to put him outside. So he needed to be completely alone. It's, it's a level of abuse that he experienced. And, and all I could think about, I know how painful or not might have been to him, but I, all I was thinking about is, what is the learning that we have to get ourselves, a society that we do this to a human being? Who do we think we are? We get horrified when we hear about terrible things that happens to people in other parts of the world because we think, oh, those places are poor people, more ignorant. You can throw, again, more and more opinions and judgments and justifications why they would do it. But what is our justification? There's a freedom in every moment that... Um, conventionally isn't uh, isn't obvious